Hello to all of you. For our devotion today, I'd like to uh, first of all tell you that if you were in uh, my practices on a regular basis, you would hear me say pretty much every day, uh, it's a great day to be alive, and it's also a great day to be an athlete. I've had the opportunity to reflect on that statement a few times in my career, and I've come up with uh, three reasons uh, that I'd like to share with you today why I believe so strongly in that statement that it's truly great to be an athlete. And from your vantage point, it's great to be a coach. Uh, first of all, it's great to be an athlete, number one, because uh, as an athlete, uh, we have the opportunity to learn how to work real hard in life. And that's a gift, really, that we can impart upon children today and upon anybody we meet. Uh, just what a blessing it is to learn how to work hard. Uh, because there are no shortcuts to success. The only place you find success before hard work is going to be in the dictionary. And so we know as athletes and as coaches that if we're going to experience any success uh, in athletics, we're going to have to work very, very hard. Um, and I have had the opportunity uh, to enjoy some, uh, some luck also in life. There's a difference between success and luck. Um, in 1995, I was fortunate enough to be playing in a golf tournament at the Yorba Linda Country Club and uh, happened to hit a hole-in-one on that day. And I'm a very bad golfer, uh, but I hit a, a hole-in-one 165 yards over water, and any human that hit a hole-in-one on that particular day in history uh, won a brand new BMW and a cruise for two to Alaska. And that was me, all right? Uh, I did not feel successful uh, on that day. I felt very blessed, very lucky because there was really no talent involved. I didn't work for that uh, hole-in-one. On the other hand, I do know what it's like to work hard and achieve some success. As a soccer player, uh, years ago at Concordia, Seward, Nebraska, uh, our, when I was a sophomore, uh, went out for the soccer team and we finished one and 11. Uh, we were terrible. Uh, but after that year, there was a group of uh, returners that uh, we just dedicated ourselves and worked very, very hard. Uh, to then my junior year finish 13 and 2. And what a great feeling that was to go to the national tournament after being the laughing stock on campus. And we saw a direct result of hard work, how that translates to success. And that's one of the joys of being an athlete, I think, to go through experiences like that. Uh, one of the athletes that uh, I was always very inspired to watch was the athlete Larry Bird. And uh, Larry Bird, as you may know about him, he worked tremendously hard. He would arrive to the uh, uh, Boston Garden uh, hours before the game and shoot, 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 and he would stay late and run, run, run. Uh, he just did extra. And uh, in one of his books uh, entitled The Drive, uh, the book called The Drive, he wrote this sentence, and I think it really captures the essence of being a great athlete and a coach. Larry Bird said, I work so hard, I better be good. And what a great attitude that is to know that you've worked so hard that, boy, any success that comes my way, I, I somewhat deserve that in, in some respects because I've worked so very hard. And then also another great uh, athlete, Tiger Woods, uh, obviously right now uh, at this point in his career is not experiencing great success. He's really struggling and his life has uh, taken a turn for the worse with his uh, affairs and so forth. But uh, when he was at the peak of his game, I captured this quote uh, out of the uh, Los Angeles Times, and I think it again says so much to us as we coach and as we uh, uh, participate in athletics or as we do anything in life. Uh, he said this, he said, you have to look at the fact that you can become better. If you think you can't, then walk because you have no business being out here if you think you can't get any better. And again, what a great attitude that is, I think, uh, as we uh, embrace our role as coaches. Uh, if we think you can't get any better as coaches and as athletes, then it's time to walk. And uh, I, I think that's just a great, great attitude to embrace throughout our lives, that we, we can all get better through hard work. Number two. The second reason I believe so strongly in athletics, it's great to be an athlete, is because athletics help us learn how to handle success and failure in life. 
The highs and lows provided by athletics are very extreme, aren't they? The highs of winning the championship are unbelievably exhilarating. And the lows of losing the championship are very, very humiliating, very, very hard to, to embrace, hard to take. So we learn how to handle those highs and lows. And my note for you this morning is that as we experience success, we want to carry ourselves with great humility because success is fleeting. Championship seasons, championship teams are very fragile. So it behooves us not to become conceited and cocky, but to handle success with great humility and graciousness. And then when we lose, all right, to also to embrace a sense of accountability, not to point the finger. Uh, at, at someone else, it was a bad pass, or it was a lousy referees, or it was a lousy gymnasium, to take accountability for the loss. And then also to work with great determination to get up and over the loss. And again, athletics provides that opportunity to never give up. If you want to be a championship athlete, a championship coach, work with relentless determination and never give up. So those highs and lows, those are good to experience in life. Uh, in the microcosm of athletics. Um, and then number three, the, the third reason I believe so strongly in athletics and, and really the most important uh, for, for us as Christian coaches and Christian athletes is that athletics provides a large platform on which to witness for Jesus Christ. People pay money to watch us play a game. All right, and so the stage is set for us to make a statement on behalf of Jesus Christ, to be a positive role model in the eyes of many, many people, many, many young children who look and idolize the, the, the athlete and, and the coach. Uh, I'm reminded, I'm very, very inspired by, by this individual, and perhaps some of you uh, recognize him and know his story, but Dave Dervecki was a, uh, a very successful pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, uh, experienced great success, and uh, left-handed pitcher, and one day he noticed his arm was, was very sore, so he went to the doctor, and um, the, the doctor diagnosed, you've got a lump in there, and it's cancerous. So they had to operate, and took much of his uh, tricep and deltoid muscle, and the doctors told Dave Dravecki, you'll never pitch again. Your career is over. But again, being a very determined, very, very hardworking athlete, uh, he worked like a dog and he got back, okay? He got back to where he could pitch again. And I remember watching him in 1989 on national TV, his first game back, and he, he, he won the, the baseball game and all of America was so happy for him uh, because he had experienced such great adversity and he came back. He wrote about his journey in a book called Comeback. And again, I highly recommend that book to you uh, someday, Come Back. But unfortunately, the second game that he pitched, again, I was watching on national TV. He was pitching uh, to the catcher, and his humerus snapped in half. And he went to the ground in writhing pain and had to be, obviously, carried off the field. And I remember watching ESPN shortly after this uh, game uh, as he was in the hospital. And he said this, and I'll never forget this, he said this, when I broke my arm, it was perfect. Because then I had a larger platform on which to witness for Jesus Christ. You see, the cameras were rolling, the news writers were ready to get the story, and he had a chance in the eyes of such great adversity to witness for Jesus Christ. And I was very moved by that, and it, it taught me that why should you and I wait for times of adversity? Look at us. Everything is healthy. Uh, again, we're, we're very strong and uh, just, just have great opportunity. Don't wait until we're faced with adversity to witness for Christ, but use today. Let today be a masterpiece, an opportunity to witness for Jesus Christ. For you see, you and I share a compelling mission together. And our mission is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20, where Jesus Christ, before he rose into heaven, 
He gave these words to his disciples. And he gives these words to you and me today. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You see it? It's great to be an athlete. We learn how to work hard. We learn how to handle highs and lows in life. And we have a wonderful platform on which to go ye therefore into all nations and witness for Christ. Draw other people closer to Christ. And may we never forget this last line that Jesus uttered to his disciples. He said, surely I am with you. I am always going to be with you till the close of the age. So today, my friends, as we lead, let us lead with great joy and great confidence, knowing that Christ is with us as we use our platforms to make a positive difference in the lives of many. May God be with you, and I hope you have a really great day.